um, of Anavex Life Sciences, where she serves as Director of Business Development and Investor Relations. Uh, her presentation is entitled Exploring uh, Sigma-1 Receptor Modulators for the Treatment of ALS. Oh, now it's there. Okay, perfect. <laughs> the Mac. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Nell Rebo. I'm Director of Business Development at Anavex Life Sciences, and I'm excited to be here today and tell you more about what we are developing at Anavex. Uh, the title of my talk is called Exploring Sigma-1 Receptor Agonist, Anavex 273, for the treatment of ALS. We are a public company, so this is our safe harbor. At Anavex, we're developing a platform for the treatment of neurological disorders. And all of these neurological conditions have uh, impaired housekeeping functions and impaired homeostasis. As John said, it was like, a, he referred it to a thermostat. So uh, we just say it's impaired homeostasis and activation of the Sigma-1 receptor is able to restore these impairments, these chronic CNS diseases. We have a broad pipeline of sigma-1 receptor modulators targeting both neurodegenerative and neurodevelopmental diseases. Anavex 273 is our lead compound, and we're in the clinic for Alzheimer's disease. We're in a phase three clinical study. Parkinson's disease dementia, we're partnered with Michael J. Fox there, and we're going into a phase three study. Rett syndrome, we're partnered with rettsyndrome.org, and we're um, also received fast track from the FDA and orphan drug designation for Rett syndrome. We also have orphan drug designation for infantile spasms and frontal temporal dementia. Now, Anavex 371 is another um, sigma receptor modulator, and that is entering uh, phase one for frontal temporal dementia. And also other mod modulators include Anavex 141 and Anavex 1066. Sigma-1 receptor is implicated in ALS, and there are several publications um, showing this. And I have highlighted a, a few here in this slide. So when you agonize sigma-1, it has been shown to improve motor function and motor neuron survival in ALS mice. Sigma-1 receptor chaperones do rescue nu nucleocytoplasmic transport deficit seen in ALS FTD models. And in the middle, there's a publication, it's uh, cleverly titled uh, by Chris Miller in the UK at King's College called, There's Something Wrong With My Ma'am, The Endoplasmic Reticulum Mitochondrial Access in Neurodegenerative Diseases. And in this publication, he highlights the role of the MAM uh, in area and its importance in uh, ALS. And he also mentioned Sigma-1 receptor. Also, Sigma-1 recept uh, receptor mutations are linked to ALS. And when you knock it out, it has been shown in ALS pathology. Autophagy, we all know, is a key is key to maintaining cellular homeostasis, and it acts as a protein clearance mechanism. Christian Bell in uh, Germany tested Anavex 273 uh, in a C. elegans model, and it showed in Anavex 273 enhanced autophagy. You can see the data in the graph to the right. And he published this data in this uh, publication on the left. In ALS, many of these damaged functions, um, as I stated, are regulated by the endoplasmic reticulum mitochondrial communication. And when this axis is disrupted, it leads to mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative stress, calcium dyshomeostasis, defects in autophagy, as well as neuroinflammation. And these are all common cellular processes, not only in ALS, but other neurological disorders. Anavex 273 has established proof of concept Sigma-1 receptor target occupancy data with a Sigma-1 receptor PET ligand. This was done in Fred Chin's lab at Stanford University and published in the publication uh, cited below. And you can see Anavex 273 dose dependently engaged with the target and over a wide therapeutic window as well. Back to Chris Miller's publication, the cleverly titled, There's Something Wrong With My Ma'am. It says that this endoplasmic reticulum mitochondrial access does play a key role in ALS. And in healthy, normal conditions, the endoplasmic reticulum is tied together to the mitochondria with these tethering proteins maintaining neuronal homeostasis. But upon disease conditions, these tethering proteins become loosened, and this is when the calcium imbalance uh, comes to play. Chris Miller tested, tested Anavex 273, and in two different assays, the EGFP assay and the PLA assay, 
And Anavex 273 increased these, this te these tethering interactions and restored the MAM. And you can see the graphs below, statistically significantly increasing the interaction between VAPB and PTP IP51. I hope Jeff Rothstein's here listening. And if you are, hi, Jeff. Thank you for your work in the ALS community. And here is your publication showing that the nuclear transport is disrupted in C9 ALS. And these repeat expansions, the block, they block the nuclear import by binding the GAP1 so that GTP cannot be converted to GDP in order to drive the nuclear import. Sigma-1 is a chaperone-like molecule and can translocate from the endoplasmic reticulum to the nuclear envelope. And here in these images, you can see that sigma-1 exists at the nuclear envelope and can bind to the nuclear pore protein RAM-BP2. Rothstein tested Anavex-273 and he showed a protective effect on the nuclear transport in the C9 Drosophila model. And you can see here that Anavex attenuated the eye degeneration phenotype. I'm gonna highlight some of the clinical data we generated thus far. This is from our proof of concept phase two Parkinson's disease dementia study. This was 132 patients. Patients received a high dose, a medium dose, and a placebo dose of Anavex. And we're very encouraged because in the UPDRS score, which is a movement scale, patients improved 14.51. They had a 14.51 improvement, which is very clinically relevant, especially since it was over such a short duration of only 14 weeks. So we were very encouraged by this data. We're also encouraged in the improvement in the CDR scale of memory and episodic memory here in this graph below. You can see uh, there was a significant improvement upon treatment with a high dose of Anavex. Again, only over 14 weeks. And so on top of all of that positive clinical data we've generated, we're also happy to report that we have found a, a predictive biomarker of efficacy. Um, there, we noticed an increase in the sigma in, in the sigma one mRNA expression in the patient's blood, correlated to an improved clinical endpoint in all three clinical studies: Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and Rett syndrome. So it's all moving in the same direction and validating our target of the sigma one receptor. In summary, we've noted that a lack of function of the sigma one gene is implicated in ALS pathology. We've shown compelling proof of concept data with Anavex 273, as well as other sigma-1 receptor agonists showing beneficial effect in not only in vitro, but also in vivo ALS disease models. We have a novel mechanism, mechanism of action. Anavex 273 is an orally available sigma-1 receptor agonist that has been shown to restore homeostasis. We've shown compelling human data with Anavex 273 demonstrating significant motor improvements in the UPDRS scale in a phase two Parkinson's disease dementia study, as well as cognitive scales in the CDR. We've shown target engagement data where Anavex 273 dose dependently engage with the sigma one receptor. And we all know that precision medicine biomarker improves chance of clinical success. So testing for biomarkers has demonstrated a correlation of the mRNA sigma one gene expression with a clinical response to Anavex 273's, 273 in all of our clinical studies. Next steps, we'll hopefully to collaborate with more of you because we would like to explore our lead drug candidate, Anvex 273 for the treatment of ALS. So maybe we can get into the clinic for an ALS study and add that to our pipeline. Um, in summary, um, we'd be happy to collaborate with you and you can email us at ir at anvex.com and I'm also available for questions right now. Thank you, Nell, for the great presentation. Um, we'd welcome questions uh, through the chat, but I'll go ahead and start. Um, you mentioned um, that uh, that you can that mRNA expression of uh, sigma receptor is a uh, biomarker um, of mm -hmm. therapeutic effect. So, is uh, sigma receptor auto regulated? That is to say, so this is an agonist, a drug the that targets the receptor. Um, why would you expect 
um, mRNA to increase with treatment. Um, and if that is a, a, a downstream effect, are there other mRNAs that are also changed uh, with treatment? Okay, so I don't know about other mRNAs, but I do know that um, there seems to be trouble with, um, it might get caught up or blocked somehow. So if you're increasing the expression of it and it's, it's showing an increased effect. So we're, um, we're, we're think, linking it to Anavex 273 being able to dis, uh, by, uh, to dislodge it and increase the expression of it in order to help chaperone and mediate the, the impairment, the chronic stress, cellular stress that's going on in the body. Okay. And a related question from the chat, um, is the mRNA for uh, the receptor detected in the blood or CSF or both? Blood. Blood, okay. Mm -hmm. um, one more uh, question uh, from the chat. So, um, since the loss of sigma-1 receptor is associated with ALS, are there subsets of patients who may not express enough sigma-1 receptor in order to respond to the agonist? Yes, um, there are certain, majority of patients we've, we've measured have the wild type or healthy version of the sigma-1, but there is a variant of the sigma-1 receptor. And we still feel like we are able to treat them, but that they might not show as much of an effect, and we're studying that now. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. And um, we'll move on.